Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 75. Hoping you guys are doing well. It is Sunday evening. Um, Everything's great, and yes, the wife made it home safe. Thank God. So she uh, she came home pretty exhausted, so by the time she got from the wedding yesterday and, uh, you know, hung out a little bit with her family and... Then finally crashed. I think it must have been like three o'clock in the morning. I know I was still up, and she texted me. It was almost three. It was about. It was a little after two, and uh, she said she stayed up a little longer, which I believe. And then uh, she had to be at the airport like six a.m. And then it was a short flight, so it wasn't like she could really sleep on the flight. And then, uh, and she wanted to get there early, so she made sure she got there early. Uh, that was my biggest fear. My biggest fear was, you know, the airport's closing. That was like I, I was like, okay. How do we do this? I'm not a driver, man. So for me to drive down to Florida is like, we, we you know, we're looking for problems here. <laughs> you know, we're looking for problems. Um, I would have had to, I don't know. I don't know. To have a jump on the bus, I think that sucks. Like, I don't even know what I would have done. I probably, I don't know what I would have done, to tell you honestly. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Get her in a helicopter, maybe, <laughs> you know? But, you know, helicopters don't have a really good reputation these days. So I guess that's out of the question. Either that, she just had to stay with her brother, you know, for a little bit, you know? At least until these leftovers that she made me run out. So, But other than that, me and the Santana, we had a good old time. And, you know, she came back anyway, Angel, and uh, took, a, took a little nap. And um, kind of wished she would have slept a little bit longer. But she didn't want to mess up her night's sleep. So, but she's good. Everything's back on track. And, um... Uh, dropped Santana off, so she's not with us. She's going to stay with her mother for tonight. We'll probably pick up tomorrow. And uh, that's it. Probably just kind of kick back, watch a movie. I mean, there's really not much to do. You know, I'm writing in the mornings. So it's not like uh, I got to get up in the morning and uh, try to book some shows. Like, everything's getting canceled. You know, it's it's crazy, man. You know, so I, I hope you guys are, um, are staying safe and... You know, I know the media is hype. It's a lot of hype. But sometimes it's best to be safe than sorry. I personally believe it's a lot of hype. I personally believe it's more hype than it should be. But for whatever reason, uh, they got everybody kind of stirred up. I don't know if it's an economic reason. Maybe they needed to clear all the shelves. And this was the fastest way. Think about this. They want to restock for the summer. Okay, there's product that's out there that's not being used. I mean, honestly, it'll benefit everybody, you know? And all of a sudden, everybody goes in and they clean out the stores. It's like spring cleaning. How crazy is that? Imagine if that was the case. That would be really, really, that would be really screwed up. Oh, my God, you know? But there are people passing away and dying. and um, But those people could be dying anyway, so we don't know, you know? These are people that could be dying from pneumonia. I mean, people die from pneumonia. People die from the flu. These could be regular people that were going to die from this stuff anyway. You know, I, I don't know. It's crazy. But I'll tell you one thing, man. I mean, I don't go into these stores. I, I just don't. Unless I'm buying some a camera. <laughs> That's the only time you'll see me on a long-ass line. I don't do banks. I don't do post offices. I find times. I usually know when these things are, like, almost empty and I'll go in. Uh, but when I got a... I don't know. I think there's something wrong with me when it comes to that. I think if they did a test, they would create some name for this shit because I could get on the line and the minute I get on the line I feel like it's not gonna move I feel like I'm gonna be there like I'm dreading this it's like the worst experience and then as we move closer I've 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 gotten off of lines at number three I was the third one online but I have been on for so long made it to number three I was the third person 
and walked off the line. How crazy is that? Now, see, that's some psycho shit there. You know, when I think about it, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's not good. <laughs> There's something wrong. There's something wrong. And then I would come outside. And he was like, e- why you still got that box? I'm like, well, I- you mean you were in there for 45 minutes and you still didn't get to mail the box? And then when I, it takes me a while, though, to explain to her what I did because so I have to lie sometimes. I say, well, it wasn't moving. I stayed there. They had no tellers. You know, there was nobody at the counter. And uh, I just can't do it. I can't do it. So and then supermarkets, oh, please. Like, you really want to torture me, you know? And she had called me. She said, hey, you know, why don't you, well, this is why she was gone. Why don't you go to the, uh, drive over to Aldi's and just, you know, get some extra toilet paper just so we have it, you know? I'm like, okay, this is the deal. Let's be real. I don't like to buy shit like that. I don't, honestly, I don't like to buy toilet paper, man. <laughs> I really don't. I don't like to buy any of that stuff. I'm going to start buying some coffee, you know? I'll buy some snacks, but, you know, I just don't like to do it. And then, and then you're sending me to Aldi's. To me, that's like the store from hell. I hate going to that store. And then they don't have bags. You got to buy a bag. And that's kind of fine. It's 10 cents. But it's like, it's just so stupid. Oh, and then you got to go and you got to have a quarter to put inside the shopping cart. And so you can, I never have a quarter. Man, I haven't had a quarter in years. I don't even know. I forgot what the damn quarter looks like. I got a card. How come they don't have that shit with a slot so you can put your card in? Who walks around with a quarter? And then if there is a quarter in the car... Whenever Angel needs change, she digs in there and she takes the quarter. I'm like, why don't you do that? Why don't you just crack the bills and throw the change in there? I used to do that all the time. If I had, you know, I do that now. Like, like if we go to the store and something costs $13, I'm ready to give them $20. So I have change. She wants to give them $13 exactly and, and $0.22, cents, whatever the hell it is. My mother used to do the same thing. I never got it, and then and then we start we start tripping later on because we ain't got no change. Yo, you got you got change. Ah, I ain't got no change. Yeah, because you gave them our change. The stores got plenty of change. We are not doing them a favor. They are not going to give us a, a reward for doing that. So give them a twenty. If if I have a hundred dollar bill, I can have a five or ten. If I have a hundred a hundred dollar bill on me, a lot of times I'm gonna crack it. I'm gonna cry. I like to have the change, man. I like to have the extra, the extra bills. You know how many times I've taken a cab, or not a cab, but like a shuttle. Or I ha- I'm coming from the airport, and I gotta tip somebody. And I, I pull out my wallet. I'm like, okay, this, this was a three minute tip. I'm not giving the dude ten bucks. I'm sorry, I'm not giving him twenty. I give him five. I give him three. That's about the, to the extent. Pretty much every, well, everybody else on the show didn't give him anything. So whatever I'm giving him is cool. You know, it's only for like a coffee or whatever. Even coffee don't pay for it, you know? So, but uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, so she went into the store. She went to Walmart, went to a couple Walmarts. We, we went down to the ghetto neighborhood because uh, it's over by the airport. We said, well, you know what? Let's go over here. You know, it's more of the ghetto area. I don't know. Let's see. Maybe, maybe there's more items in there, you know, because, yo, listen, sometimes we don't. We don't care. We're like, yo, man, I got enough toilet paper. I'm good here. I'm, I'll am i survive it. I'm, I'm, You know, that's just how a lot of us are. And and we went in there. Well, she went in there. She came out. She said, there's nothing in here. She wanted to buy. And we usually buy the big cases of, like, you know, what is it, 75 freaking bottles for, like, $2 of water. Now she came out with that, you know, a dollar each. Bought, like, 14 bottles. I'm like, what? A dollar each, man? Like, now I'm feeling this shit. <laughs> You know, so a dollar each is cool when you're going to buy it from the store and you're going to drink it while you're walking. I'm buying a case of this stuff, you know. But uh, um, but anyway, we went, did a couple of, they found, she found where um, where they had some paper products. Um, we're good, but we're not overstocked. We're not like everybody else where we're filling up the thing. But we got a little extra just in case, you know. It lasts us at least the two weeks, what we have. <laughs> if it goes uh, three weeks, we might be we we might have a problem. I think we're set for the end of the month. That's what she did. I know she bought. We have enough meat and stuff and uh, food for the till the end of the month. Now we go past the end of the month, we might run into some problems. So I don't know. But um, <clears throat> other than that, uh, 
it's crazy, man. It is scary, though. It is, it is scary. I gotta, I, I do gotta admit it. When you, and then, oh, this is crazy. Go on Netflix, guys. I don't know if it's Netflix or Amazon. Now they're showing all the movies like Outbreak. Uh, what's it called? Pandemic, pandemic, pan, pandemic, pandemic. Um, they got a couple of these virus, uh, another documentary on, uh, I'm like, yo, okay. Like, we really want to watch this now? Do I really want to watch? You guys remember Outbreak? I think that's with uh, Morgan Fitch, Morgan Freeman. Yeah, I was going to say Fairchild. Morgan Freeman, Outbreak. And um, I remember watching that years ago, man. I don't want to watch. I would never want to watch that right now. Are you kidding me? Holy shoot. You know, and they started talking about a while ago, the way they would talk about arm, arm yourself, have extra food, extra, you know, non-perishable goods, uh, gallons, of, extra gallons of water. Guys, I ain't do none of that. For real. I ain't do none of that. No, I have a few extra little things, but enough for me. I don't know where everybody else in the house is gonna eat, but <laughs> but uh, but I do. I know my brother. I know a few friends. I know some. Uh, I know Angel, a couple of people in Angel's family. They stock up, man. Like 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 they were serious. And you know what? Shit hits the fan. I'm I might have to. Go over there. <laughs> I might go check them out. But uh, but then I can understand because people are fighting, supposedly fighting in the stores, you know, over toilet paper and over water. And I'm like, wow. This can this can possibly something like this can possibly you know, we're growing up in the in the United States of America. As far as we're concerned, this could never happen to us. This happens to other people in other countries. Not to us, but check it out. What if it does? What if it does happen to us? What's going to happen when there's absolutely nothing left in these stores? And these people are basically going hungry. And they grab their guns. And now they're going to go. And they're going to go get theirs. They're going to go and they're going to kick down some doors. And they're going to go and they're going to get their water and they're going to get their food, and they're going to do whatever they have to do to save their family. How crazy is that? And when you think about it, because now you understand, like today I can understand why they would suggest you be armed. I'm a persistent felon. I can't be armed. This is crazy. I can't be armed. I can have a knife. (laughs) Maybe a stick. You know, BB gun. I got a couple of those. I could probably make those work, but but I can't be armed. So what happens then? You know, pull out my noon trucks. But um, so it could be it could be pretty scary. You know, so I, I'm just hoping that everything just comes back to normal. But you know, I think after this time, I know at least for me. When everything turns back to normal, I'm going to truly consider stocking up. Thing is, with my house, I don't have like a basement. I have an attic, but I also have a lot of crap. You know, I do, you know, I do a lot. I got a lot of cameras and lights and uh, maybe some of that shit is unnecessary. I don't know. I don't have the the other room. I could probably do a storage in the back, another storage, storage shed. I don't know. But I'll tell you one thing I'm thinking about it. And I believe that when this time when this is over, I can understand, I could see myself um starting to think about this, starting to stack up on certain things. And and they say, I think they say did they say six months worth? That's a lot, man. That's like I would need like another house just to store that stuff. Like, you know, how do you do that? But even if it's not six months, at least if it's a if it's a month, you kind of make it work, you know. But uh, let's just hope it doesn't get it doesn't get like that, you know. So, but you know, you guys stay stay safe, man. They say they say it's not really in the air, but to be careful. So you know, wear gloves, wash your. Hands. I, I'm always washing my hands, but I wash my hands anyway. I'm the type I touch the door and I'll, I wash my hands. I I touch a table, 
a table or anything, I wash my hands, you know, so, but, uh, but yeah, so, um, yeah, so it's crazy, it's crazy, but you know, maybe the timing for me personally is good, because remember, I gotta finish this book, so think about it. So think about it, um, no distractions, except for my stomach rumbling, but that shouldn't happen for a while, we're good, um, but now I have this time to get my writing on and finish these books, no excuses, no disruptions, no, oh, I'm doing a concert now, I gotta do 12 contracts and get them out get them signed and which would be a beautiful thing financially uh, but that can take up a lot of my time so yeah, it's crazy it, it really is it really is so um i already have artists hitting me up and they they know it i don't even know why they ask me yo what's up man is it, is it really dead out there i'm like are you kidding me like who's gonna book a show <laughs> Who's going to book a show now have with all these people? It's crazy. Shows have been canceled, man. There's a lot of shows that have been... I've been watching online. They're canceling. I have a friend of mine, his birthday party. His 50th birthday party. He's in California. And I remember he was been planning this. He's been promoting this. <clears throat> it looked like it was going to be a blast. And he announced... Well, he could, I, I saw it today, at least, that um, the venue cl- canceled. They canceled him out. He tried to find another venue, but nobody's nobody's biting, and uh, I agree. He just needs he needs to just leave it alone. I was surprised that the wedding went forward. I was I, I didn't know what to expect with that. I didn't know if like not enough people were gonna show up and they were just gonna be like, wow, there's only the bride and groom, an angel, <laughs> and their parents. You know, that'd be the extent of it. But um, it went it went it went through. It happened. So. But, um, yeah, these places are shutting down. A lot of people were, you know, a lot, especially freestyle. A lot of us depend on this, man. A lot of it depend, a lot of us depend on it. So, <clears throat> so you know, all we got to do is pray and, you know, really think, man, let this be a wake-up call to, uh, to see how things can be, how things can really get. You know, I mean, there's there's people already having really, really crazy situations. I go through my crazy situation. I picked a genre that is a struggle, you know. So I have a lot of, um, I get a lot of rocks thrown at me. It's a constant uphill battle. Not that I don't enjoy it. I do. But, you know, I didn't pick an easy road. I could have. I could have picked a much easier road. I chose this road. And, it, and it's a struggling road. And then I think about those who are struggling more than I am. I can't even claim that I struggle yet. I have struggled, but it's, it's, it's always a temporary struggle. It's never, thank God so far, it's never been something where there is no hope. Where I'm looking to the future, I'm like, what do I do now? So I'm not at that, I'm not at that, in that position and I'm trying to do everything I can to make sure I'm not in that position at all, you know. And that's the advice I give everyone, you know, especially those who have, you know, corporate jobs, nine to fives, who depend wholeheartedly on it. Keep in mind, it doesn't take much for people to let you go. So, you know, not to worry everybody, but you got to put it in your head. You know, what would you do? You know, so... But, um, you know, I'm, I'm looking, I'm thinking about some of these people that are already having a hard time. And there are quite a few artists. I know I talk to them. I would never reveal their, their situation or who they are. Never. To anybody. And my wife, I don't even talk to my wife about that. I just find it very personal. And it's my, uh, I'm, it's, it's confidence I have between me and them. But a lot of them have opened up to that point where I know how bad it is. It's really bad. And sometimes I sympathize. It's been to a point where I felt so bad that I've gotten on the phone and would generate X amount of shows 
just because I know they got some bills coming up, or I know the holidays are coming up. You know, I had this one act, very famous group, very famous. Nobody on this podcast would not know who this group is, but check this out. So the lead singer of the group contacts me. This is about five years ago. Calls me in, I think it was like right after Thanksgiving, okay? And we're talking, and we always talked, and he tells me, hey, man, I need help. I'm like, what's up? He goes, man, I don't even have gifts for my daughter. She was only, I think it's like six years old. He goes, I was like, oh, man. He goes, we got like nothing. Like, like everything is totally, totally dry. And you see, he could have told me any of that stuff. But where he got me was when he told me he couldn't even get his daughter anything. Okay? And, oh, actually, it wasn't after. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why it was. Yeah, let me see. This January. Yes, okay. Yeah, it was in November, okay? So, now usually in November, you're not going to book a show. You're not going to really be able to book anything for the rest of the year. That's going to be hard. Anyone who's going to book you for December or January or for New Year's, they would have done it already a few months prior. So, if it, once you're in November, you pretty much better tighten the, you know, back down the hatches, tighten the belt, and... Look forward and just push as hard as you can because there's nothing else really going to come through. But so this guy hits me up and he tells me that and what really struck me was when he told me that he had absolutely nothing for his daughter this Christmas. And I felt like crap because I spoil my kids. I, in fact, go overboard, always have, because my mom, as little as she had, went overboard with me. My mother would save up all year long to get me a gift that I really wanted. I was like that with my children, and I'm like that with my grandchildren. Well, me and Angel, and Angel was a part, you know, of, with the children as well as the grandchildren. So, yeah, so, and she was a part of that hustle as far as uh, making sure they always had everything. Even before I was with her, <coughs> that was always my thing, you know. Um, so when he told me about his, his daughter... It really hit me because I knew what I already got from my kids. So I got on the phone. Now, I'm not in the position to now, you know, go give them my shit or, you know, give or send them some money. I'm not that situation, especially right before the holidays, you know. Yeah, I bought a lot of stuff, but I used all my money. That was it. I'm, I'm, now I got to just kind of make it work until after the holidays, everything picks up. So I said, man, so I get on the phone. And I, I start to hustle just for him, just for him. Not for my cover girls, not for Susie, not for Angel, not, just for him, him and his group. And I, I'm calling, I'm calling. Finally, their group is a perfect group for Valentine's Day. So I sold them, and I remember, I think Valentine's fell on a, I think it did, fell on a Saturday. So it was just perfect timing. So I called and I made the offer. I made an I, I I did an asking um, for a Valentine's show for this group. The promoter was excited because I worked the numbers, so it wasn't as expensive as it would normally be. And so the the, the promoter went, got in touch with his partner. A few hours later, they called me back, and they're like, "Oh hell yeah, let's do it!" So I'm like, "Yes." So they send me the money, the deposit. We go into the contract. I contact the, you know, I send it to the to the artist. <clears throat> he signed off. They're thanking me. They're praising me. This, 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 and that. Okay. And I feel good. Not only did I get the show for him, I didn't take commission. So I didn't take my 10%. So my 10% was sent also to him. So I wasn't going to take anything. I felt good about it. 
And until right now, this minute, this five, six years ago, I have never spoken to anyone about this. Angel's the only one, of course, because she knows who I'm booking and what the deal is. No one else. Not even the other members of the, of the group. Because I'm dealing with one member. Okay, the other ones are just going to do the show. So, and, and, and let me remind you, it was a freestyle group. Okay, so anybody who's thinking about any of the male freestyle groups, it's not. It was an R&B group, okay? Very popular R&B group. Anyway, so I secured a show for them. This is, remember, it's going to be Valentine's Day. It'll be Saturday, February 14th, okay? And um, so we went. Maybe about a week goes by. All of a sudden, I see a flyer. For another show, it's actually a concert, a big concert. And the group is on it, doing like a love jam on Valentine's Day. So I look at it, I'm like, hmm. Like, it, you know, it didn't hit me right right away. I didn't, it didn't register right away because I'm like thinking, I'm looking at the date. Is this an old flyer? Like, you know, what is this? Is this, sometimes people will make a flyer look like a, a show. And it's not actually a show. It's like a radio show. So, you know, you're just going to hear all these artists. You're not going to see it, but they'll put their pictures. So I'm checking all those, and I'm like, what the hell? So finally, I called the dude. I'm like, hey, man, I just saw a fly. Oh, yeah, man, yeah, I meant to call you. They meant to call me on this. He says, you know, we got another show with this promoter. And he, um... Uh, he wants to, uh, you know, he wants to do this big shit concert, and you know, the guys now all of a sudden the guys uh, have say, the guys want to do it, and I'm like, yo, man, the promoter is freaking, you know, really, uh, the promoter is really, you know, looking forward to this Valentine show, you know, I said, I said, I basically sold my soul to get this for you, I said, it's gonna make me look really bad. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to send back the money, though. I said, it's not about the money. I said, you know, he goes, yeah, but he didn't start promoting. I said, because it was still, it's still right before the holiday. Who's going to promote now? So he was going to wait till right after Christmas and start, you know, start promoting uh, for, you know, January, all of January, all of February. It's just a club, only holds a few hundred people. Doesn't need four months to promote it, you know. But you're doing it on the same exact day. And at that point, it wasn't even like, oh, man. It was like, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry, you know. And and that's pretty much, you know, what he, uh, what he, um, you know, that's all he was able to say was he was sorry. So, but, um, and uh, so I end up calling the promoter. This is what was so crazy. So, and actually, actually, I took a, a a few days before I called the promoter because he wasn't promoting. And I was like, man, how am I going to freaking tell this dude that? First thing I told the artist, I was like, yo, send that money back like ASAP. You know, that took about a week to get back. So apparently they spent that money and they were waiting for the next deposit and they sent me the money from that deposit. And um, so I, um, uh, it takes me a few days. Finally, I called the promoter, all right? And I'm like, man, how am I going to say this? What am I, I freaking, I made this group look like the best group in the whole wide world. I, like, I went on turbo sales. Like, I, I sold this shit so hard, man. Like, my own life depended on it. Like, my own livelihood depended on it. And I called the promoter, and he goes, oh, la, man, so glad to call you, man. He goes, I've been meaning to call you. I'm like, what's up? He says, yo, I have a problem. I'm like, what? He goes, man, we gotta, we gotta postpone that date for another time. I'm like, what happened? There's a big event going on in the area and the club doesn't wanna have their doors open at the same time they feel like they're gonna take a hit. And they don't wanna do, they don't wanna do Valentine's Day. I said, what date do they want to do? He goes, man, he goes, I don't know. He goes, they, they, they're going to let me know, like, right after the holidays. I'm like, okay. He goes, man, listen, man, I'm a, I apologize, man. I know 
I'm putting you in a bad situation and I know I'm aware that I'm going to lose my deposit and da, 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 da. And I was like, bro, I said, listen, now I didn't tell him the truth for what happened. I just ran with that because it was fine. And I told him, listen, man, I said, don't worry about it, man. Don't worry about it. I said, don't sweat it. I said, I'll get them another gig. I said, I'll put them on something else. I said, in the deposit, I said, I'll get you your deposit back. He goes, what? I said, yeah, I'm going to get you your deposit back. And um, and he goes, oh, man. He goes, you man, la, what, la. You know, it gives me all kinds of props. And a week later, I said, you know, just give me a minute to get, get it back. And then finally, I got the deposit back. And I sent the whole thing to him. Now, he had contacted me before that. He goes, man, he goes, you did all this work, man. He goes, at least keep the 10%, keep the commission. I'm like, bro, it's good. I said, it's good. Don't worry about it. Here's the deposit. And, let, let, you know, maybe we can use it for some, something else. So after the holidays, we'll talk and maybe we can book somebody else. And the dude at that time, you know, praised the hell out of me. And uh, to this day, I mean, he will not do a show if I'm not involved. So it all worked out in the long run. And I have not dealt with that group ever since. No, nothing personal. They did what they had to do, whatever. But... I always have my guards up, and of course, I would never make that kind of kind of kind of run for them. Uh, they just lose that, but it's all good. But anyway, I just want to share that story with you guys. It just popped up. I haven't heard, I haven't even thought about that in like years since it happened. Basically, I kind of like washed it out of my head, and I never told, told anybody. So you guys are the first. <laughs> anyway, listen, guys, I, I kind of over overstayed my welcome here. Um, I appreciate you listening. Please uh, make sure to share the podcast. If you are Anchor or Spotify, let people know that I'm doing a podcast. And I really appreciate it, man. Post on your pages, whatever you can do. It always helps me, you know. Um, But, you know. But anyway, listen, it was fun. I appreciate it, man. Uh, This is episode 75, so we're, we're doing good. So, But until tomorrow, good night, Freestyle. Before I lay me down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.